Scaling your business to new insane revenue levels doesn't have to be overwhelming. It's all about the right strategy, team, efficiencies, and confidence. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Evolution Podcast. With over 1 million downloads, it's the go-to business podcast dedicated to business owners who want to evolve out of operating in the day-to-day and make their dreams come true. I'm your host, Annette Walter, and I'm so happy you are here. As a former banker, I have now been an entrepreneur for over 15 years and have started, grown, acquired, and sold over 20 multi-million dollar companies to date. Together, you and I will strengthen your existing business, build your dream team and process, grow your wealth and legacy, all while surrounding you with a community of rock star entrepreneurs just like yourself. Are you ready to evolve? Let's get started. Welcome to today's Entrepreneur Evolution Podcast. I am so excited to share with you today's interview. I am joined by a dear friend, a huge inspiration, and a rock star business owner and mom. Her name is Karina Gardner, and she is the founder and CEO of Karina Gardner, Inc., Let me just tell you something. This woman is so talented. Not only is she highly creative and design oriented, but she is building a business that has had such insane growth in the last year. It's just, it's just commendable. It's amazing. And she's an action taker. She's decisive and she's doing it. And you're going to learn so much from her. She has her PhD in design from the University of Minnesota, and she taught design at University of Minnesota for five years before starting the actual business. She's taught graphic design foundations, typography, design theory, packaging design. And let me just tell you something. She's designed fabrics for Riley Blake designs and die cut files for Silhouette. She has designed wallpaper and dishware and jewelry and home decor for um, just different, different big retail stores out there. And currently, you can find all of her digital designs and scrapbooking pro- uh, products on snapclicksupply.com. She's everywhere, and she's incredible on Instagram. You have to follow her at Karina Gardner, and uh, I just, I, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to be inspired, and it's funny because she starts by telling her childhood story, and um, we were probably, we would have been probably best friends when we were little, but she would have been, like, making the dresses for the Barbies, and I would have been like, okay, how can we sell these dresses and, um, you know, take these to market? Um, so I just am grateful for her friendship. I'm grateful for her inspiration and I love learning from her and growing with her along this entrepreneur journey. And I know you will too. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's listen and don't be shy. Reach out, schedule that one-to-one coaching session. I'm really proud of you and I'm proud of the journey that you are on. I see you and I want to make sure that you feel surrounded. So thanks for being here today. Keep evolving entrepreneur. I am so, so proud of you. Welcome, Karina. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I love being here. Thanks, Annette, for having me. I am so excited you are here. Your story is incredible. Today, we are joined by Karina Gardner. She is founder of Karina Gardner, Inc., Everything Design, and you are just building an incredible business. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. It, it is so fun to be here. I love talking about business. Most of the time I'm talking about design. So it's really fun to be on a business podcast because at, at the heart of things as a designer, I'm still an entrepreneur. I love it all. I love it all. And you are rocking it. So let, let's rewind a little bit here. Okay. So take, take us back as, as far as you want to go, you can start, you know, when I was a little girl, I was a little entrepreneur, whatever you want to start, take us back and catch us up to speed. What's your history? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So I actually think, you know, everybody has the story of how they were an entrepreneur as a kid. I don't think I have that. I love it. I love it. I was a creative as a kid. Like I was like the girl like cutting the fabric to make the Barbie dresses that were really terrible and breaking my mom's sewing machine. I was that girl. That was not. Um, So I was a creative. (laughs) (laughs) So I was a creative at heart. Um, When I went to um, 
to school, I decided I actually wanted a degree in communications. I really liked marketing. So my undergrad degree is in marketing. What I found was I didn't have the skill level to do the kind of marketing I wanted to do because I would see the whole vision and I would be like, oh my gosh, it should have a picture here and the typography should be here. And so I went and got a master's degree in design, which is a funny transition, but they really go together very nicely. Well, it turns out I, I finished my master's degree. I had my first baby and you know, my, my professor looked at me and goes, Karina, all you have is three more classes and a dissertation. You should finish your PhD. We need PhDs very badly in the design world because we don't have deans of colleges that are our designers because the MFA is the terminal degree for designers. I said, sure. So three years later, I finished a PhD. I was very, very young, very young to finish this. And the whole time I taught design at the University of Minnesota and actually a couple of other colleges mm. with every intention of being a professor, like wow. coming out, doing research. I did a ton of research on short-term memory and logo work. Um, wow. and I, I loved it. I thought it was amazing, but I needed something flexible because at the time I had a one-year-old and a four-year-old, I have three kids now, but at the time, just get that young mom stage. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's so crazy. I'm a designer, but I'm trying to fit myself into this nine to five situation. Right. And so I just, decided, Hey, I think I'm going to design for a while, become a practitioner of the thing I teach. And so I have been doing that now for 14 years and mm -hmm. built an amazing design business online was the creative director of a scrapbooking company, a very big scrapbooking company. Mm -hmm. Um, and all of that to say about a year ago, I started a design program because I saw in the market that there are lots of digital, amazing di digital classes teaching you illustrator software, teaching you how to do like surface pattern design, but no one was actually taking accountability for their designers to make them make money. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is a problem. This is a big problem because there are lots of people out there thinking they're going to become designers and no one's teaching them actually how to make money. So it's like that business meets creative piece of it. Yes. And, um, we started, it hasn't, I don't know when this is going to come out, but it hasn't even been a year. And we've gone gangbusters because people recognize that they were missing a piece in their design education. That's amazing. And, you know, those were two, two big, different, like, like business types of businesses. Right. So, um, in the space where you had a retail product, right? In the, in the scrapbooking, you were in significant retail stores, which you're kind of doing yourself a little disservice right now, but like you had a major, major business there. And just, I love how you found the gap and what was really wrong and the problem and you went and solved it. And we have a lot of business owners out there, Karina, right now that have the basic you know, brick and mortar or this business, this traditional business, let's say a traditional business. And they see so much happening in the online space, so much opportunity, a gap. So, so talk a little bit about that transition and what you really went through and how you processed that and went from one to the other. What was that like? Yeah, there is a gap there. And actually, Annette and I just talked about it because she's on my podcast and she's brilliant there. Um, but there is actually a really big difference between the practitioner mm -hmm. versus the teacher or becoming the instructor for something. So I own still those two businesses, right? I still design. I am still a designer. It's one of my favorite things I do with my life, mm -hmm. um, which is why people love coming into my program because they know that I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth about how much money you can make. Yes. I'm going to tell the truth about how we can become significant money makers in our family life. And also just how, how to make design a creative endeavor. And it's not going to be all roses and daisies. I, I feel like that is a lot of the creative space. It's all going to be wonderful and you're flexible. And, and I'm like, no, 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 it's hard work, yes. but it's wonderful. And let, yes. let's come into my world so that you can seriously start making money doing this. Absolutely. And you, you, you are such a strong worker. You, you're an implementer, you're, you, you execute so quickly, which is something that I, I so admire about you. Like, it's just such a talent and such a skill. So talk to us about, um, step one in your business. All right. So when you had this, how did you built a team very quickly over the past year, 
I mean, not even a year, right? It'll be like a year anniversary as we, as this probably drops. Not even, March yeah. April, right? <laughs> it's, so talk to it's, us about what the last year really looked like. What were your first steps? What were, has the team developed? Because that's so important to share. Yeah, I, I think, okay, so the first step is right sales, right? So make sure that your sales are strong enough that you can bring people on. Um, now, yeah. that being said, you're still taking a leap of faith, right? Because you're hoping, especially when you're brand new, that the sales are going to be there so that you can build up the team. So um, let's see, I started in April of 2021. That's when we launched the program. We saw a great amount of success. I knew what the program could be based on just the, the first month. And then the next month I hired two people. I hired a VA and a video editor. Those were the needs I needed. Like I, I, I'd heard from a lot of people like hire social media first or hire, a, you know, all these things. And I said, I just really dug down into my business. I said, what is taking up my most time? Mm -hmm. And for me, it was editing video. We, we have a lot of content I'm crafting and educational sewing, sh like showing a lot of things. And I was like, if I had a video editor, that would free up 10 hours a week. So that's the way I started. And then second, I hired a VA knowing that it was a really inexpensive first step. And if I could learn how to delegate those things, because by the way, I'm not a natural delegator. I want to do it all myself, right? I think as a solopreneur, we kind of do that. And so I wanted to do it all myself. And I was like, I need to learn how to delegate. And the VA was a way to start that. So that was month two in May, I hired two people by about August. We had grown big enough that I was like, if I don't get someone in here to help me manage the people, like the program, making sure that everyone is happy, you guys, that it honestly, for me, because I'm a product based person, right? I'm a designer. I like product. The program to me is a product and I am constantly and anyone who's in my membership will tell you this. I am constantly trying to make it better because I don't want anyone to fall through the cracks. We're like reaching out all the time. We're trying to make sure they're good. And I was doing all that by myself. And I said, we have to have someone to help us. So we hired our first member success manager in August. So we stayed with those three people until about December. In December, I had the epiphany that we're so big now that if I don't hire someone that is like another me, then I'm in trouble. I'm in big, big trouble. Um, that's when I started looking for a director of operations. Mm -hmm. And so I went from like three, like contract workers, right. To being like, I need one full-time person to help me. So I hired this director of operations. She started like December 31st. And, um, immediately after she came on, we, um, we had some feelers out for social media manager and I found someone. Mm -hmm. And then, um, we actually ended up needing a bigger position for the member success manager. So that person came on, we have a, a, a membership on the side and hired three people to be our ink club contributors for that. Um, this is all happening very, very quickly, right? Like it was like it. December, January, we we're just like, oh my gosh. And then the best thing was my husband actually is not at his job anymore. And he became our marketing specialist. So we went from zero last April. We're not even a year old to 10 of us on a team, which has been insane, but um, and it, it's made me have to figure out some skills that are not designed. Mm -hmm. which you've done really well. You're decisive. And so let's talk to the audience because so many people ask that question, how do I take, how do I um, really benefit or serve more people online? Or how do I take my traditional service-based business? We're talking, you know, financial firms, attorneys, uh, tutoring companies, a lot of those, those companies that are traditionally based, how do they get there? So what would be your advice to them because it seems so daunting everything you just described you know and and it, it's amazing and i love how you positioned it as an actual another product right so talk talk to them about that i well i really think um if you're thinking traditionally you do have to have a little mindset shift about teaching or being online because i was doing physical products mm -hmm. we've done tons of brand deals under my name like dishware and all that other stuff. Right. Um, and so it is, there is just like transition when you decide, wait, I'm going to do this other thing online. If you're going from brick and mortar, or if you're a financial institution, or you're an attorney, my husband was an attorney. So I understand that. 
you suddenly have to start thinking about exactly what you're doing being an evergreen product. So you can build something that lives forever online, which is really that takes a little bit of a mindset shift. Cause you're like, no, 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 no. I, as an attorney, I bill an hour. Right. Or as I, um, as I'm a doctor, I have to do this, this, and this, if I'm a financial institution, I have to meet with my people. But the truth is there are certain things you can do that are evergreen online. And then there are certain things that you can do one-to-one or group coaching, whatever, to make it more substantial. So I actually feel like there are more opportunities online than most people give it credit for. So for example, my program, um, because I'm basing it off of like being a university professor, we have 13 courses in the program. Those are evergreen, right? Like they last forever. I might have to update them with new software or whatever, but I'm constantly doing that. In fact, we're moving to 17 courses this year. Every year I add more coursework to it. So that's the evergreen piece, right? But then the other piece that really makes the program successful is we do mentor meetings and we call them squad meetings. We have like networking meetings every single week. We have workshops. So things to keep us motivated and becoming great designers. You can build any business this exact same way. There's this evergreen piece that it makes your life a lot easier, right? And then there's this other piece that's in real time so that people can keep up to date with what's trending now. Mm -hmm. So good. And that it comes with a lot of work though, right? It does, but a lot of upfront work. I think like if you can do a lot of the upfront work for the evergreen piece, then you're living the day to day for teaching people what, what you actually know. So how do you feel right now as an entrepreneur? How, how does it feel? And, you know, cause you just hit, you just had a huge year and you just hit a pivotal point in the growth and the revenue of your business and your team size. So how does it feel? Well, the crazy thing is the moment you figure out that a team will change your life Mm -hmm. and have changed your life, you have the ability to keep going. So right now I am still working a lot. We're still in the first year of that business. So it is a lot of work. And I think it's folly to tell anyone that just because you hire a team doesn't mean you're not going to continue to work hard. But for me, I see like six months into the future, even a year into the future, what my life actually looks like. I, I predict I will be working substantially less. I will be designing substantially more, which is my, where my happy place is. Um, and so because I can see that vision, I know what I need to hit, what I need to do in revenue, what I need to do on the team. And it becomes very clear. And I think one of the things that we need as entrepreneurs more than anything is clarity. If we have clarity, we can just move forward. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have a lot of clarity over on the next three years, what this business will look like just because we've seen the massive growth in the first year. And so we know what we need to do. Yeah. I love it all. So, so what keeps you going as a business owner? Do you have any you know, personal mantra or words of words of wisdom that you say to yourself when you're having those moments of overwhelm, anything that kind of clicks you into that positive mode, keep the momentum. Um, I think actually the biggest thing as a business owner that keeps me going anyway, and for your audience who has multiple different types of careers Mm -hmm. is that I know I am helping the one-on-one designer for me, like there's nothing I I would almost do this for free. You guys like, that's the crazy thing about it, but I can only instruct so many people, but like when I get the email, which I get these all the time for my members, because they know I care about them. I love them. And I want them to become amazing designers. When I get the email that says you've changed my life, Uh, like I, it makes me want to cry. And I'm like, this is why I do this. uh This is why it's meaningful to me. And I think every business can have that. Uh I think every business can have this thing where the people on the other side of the table are going, this is changing my life. Yes. This has made my life a little bit better. Thank you. And and you're right. It, it does. It puts you, it's like, that's, it fills your heart. It fills your soul when you get comments like that, when you get feedback like that, and you just want to serve more people and reach more people and kudos to you for doing that. Like, I'm just I'm so, so incredibly proud of you. I can, I know where you're going and it's, it's incredible. Um, how can we support you? How can we 
find you? How can we learn more about you? How can we support you? Oh, you are so nice, Annette. So you guys can find me at Make and Design with Karina Gardner. That's my podcast. Even if you don't love design, there's actually, I have a lot of creatives on there and people will come and listen just to understand like, what are things I can do to move forward in my own business? Mm-hmm. Um, it, I, I think everyone's creative. I think yes. especially entrepreneurs, we yes. are creatives because all that design is, is visual solution building. And yes. so as an entrepreneur, you're just a solution builder, right? That is a creative sphere of knowledge. And so we have to be constantly thinking outside the box. We can't be paying attention to what everybody else is doing and comparing ourselves. Instead, what we should be doing is paying attention to what everyone's doing and figure out how we can do it better, smarter, more strategic so that we we level up in a way that everybody else doesn't. So as entrepreneurs, we're being creative every day to find those solutions. So that's my podcast, Make and Design with Karina Gardner. You can also, most popular with me is hanging out with me on social media. It's just at Karina Gardner. I'm talking about design. I'm debunking design myths and uh, just having a good time. And it's pretty over there. So if you like pretty it stuff, so pretty, and I love the reels. I love like, I'm like, Oh my goodness. It's so beautiful. It's just all so great. And you're like, you now it's all like the Easter stuff and the fun, like summer stuff. It's just so beautiful. So congratulations on everything. And thank you so much for sharing more about you and the companies here on the podcast. Thanks so much. for you. Wow, what an episode. Did you learn something new? I hope so. I am so happy you were able to be here with us today. I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a review and I will be sure to read it and respond to you. Also, if you'd like to email me, my email address is urock at iEvolveConsulting.com. Hit subscribe and every Tuesday you'll get notification when the next episode drops. We really have some amazing interviews and tips in the future. Anything you need, I'm here for you. I want you to keep your momentum. I want to help you stay accountable. I want you to stay inspired. I want you to evolve. So please let me know what you need and I'd love to hear from you. Take care until next time.